A question I've been asked quite a lot recently is if you should supplement your custodies armies with some imperial knights. And so I figured that today we would be talking about exactly that. Should you soup your custodies army with imperial knights, more specifically Helvrins and warglaives? Before we get started looking at them too much now, let's talk about why people are even considering it. And as with many of my videos I've come to find, the answer lies in 9th edition. In 9th edition, Custodes saw quite a lot of use from bringing Helverins in their army. It wasn't only Custodes that used Helverins, Grey Knights used them, Base Marines used them, and generally a lot of Imperial armies used Helverins because they brought something that a lot of armies didn't have, which was good long-range anti-infantry slash small vehicle shooting. The Helverin is equipped with two Helverin auto cannons, which each were 2 d3 shots, so a total of 4 d3 shots at strength 7, AP 2, damage 3, and that profile was just really good against a lot of things. Against Terminators, you were forcing their 5-up invulnerable save. Or sorry, their 4-up their save, because it's, they, they didn't have a 4-up invulnerable save, but you were forcing their 4-up save, every fail was a dead guy. Against Custodes, you were forcing the 4-up invulnerable save as well, that would also kill a Custody every shot you put into them. Against a Dreadnought, you could deal some decent damage. And in general, the weapon profile was just really good into a lot of things, which made sense to bring them. On top of that, they were range 48, if not more, so you could put them in the back line while holding an objective and then just putting out shots against basically anything, and you would be fine with it. On top of that, you also had a stratagem that gave them lethal hits, or auto-wounding on 6s to hit, as it was called in 9th edition. And as I said, yeah, for Custodes, it brought something they really lacked, which was that anti-infantry long-range shooting. We did have some long-range shooting in the form of the Calidus Graf Tank, as well as our Virtus Praetors and their Salvo Launchers, but you didn't really get a lot of shots with those, and they were usually reserved for the big things. Think uh, Magnus, or, well, an Imperial Knight, like, like a big thing. Those shots were, were aimed at those guys, because this was the only source of strength 8 or more shooting we had in our codex. Custodes infantry shooting was actually more or less the same as it was in 9th edition as it is in 10th edition, but also worse, because we had 24 inch range like we did before, but we didn't have two shots, we just had rapid fire, which meant you had to be inside of 12. It also meant you couldn't advance and shoot, and in general shooting for Custodes was just kinda bad in 9th edition. And, and for that reason, the Helverins made a lot of sense. They had a decent number of shots. They could shoot into almost anything. They were fairly tough to kill. And if they were focused on shooting your Helverins, well, then you had the Custodes infantry just push up into the enemy and take them down that way. So that is a little history lesson in why people brought Helverins in 9th edition and why people are considering bringing Helverins in 10th edition. Because in theory, they still fill that same role. Except when we look at the numbers, it's just not quite the same. So, first of all, the Armager Auto Cannons are now just 4 shots each instead of D3 shots. That is an increase in shots, looks good on paper. However, the profile also changed in other ways than just the number of shots. The strength has gone up from strength 7 to strength 9, but the AP is down to AP 1. The damage is still 3, which is fine. But we gotta remember, toughness is up in the game. Not only is toughness up in the game, but cover is everywhere. You actually have to try to not get cover. And so AP1 usually means that something with a 2-up save, let's say for example a Redemptor Dreadnought, will actually have a 0-up save. But in any case, let's do the math, because math talks more than thinking. Well, thinking is math, but in any case, I did the math. So an Armager in 9th edition would have a 56% chance, that is the average, of dealing 6 damage to a Redemptor Dreadnought and a 25% chance to deal 9 damage. This is assuming average number of shots and no stratagems or anything else used. In 10th edition, the Redemptor has gone up to be toughness 10 and have a 2-up save, and the Armature Cannons are down to AP 1 and strength 9. So it used to be able to wound a Redemptor Dreadnought on 4s, and then bring the Redemptor Dreadnought to a 5-up save, Whereas in 10th edition, most likely, the Redemptor is slightly in cover, which means that not only does the Armager Helverin wound on 5s, because it's strength 9, but the Redemptor Dreadnought is also taking saves on 2s, because it's in cover and therefore ignoring the 1 AP. As such, you have a measly chance of dealing 3 damage, and the chance of that is 34%. That means that less than half of the times, which is average, you will deal 0 damage. 
or sorry, that was worded weirdly, 34% of the chance you're dealing free damage, which means that 64% of the time, 66% of the time, math is hard, you're dealing zero damage. And then you have only a 10% chance of dealing six damage. And if the Redemptor, yeah, is in cover, as I was saying, there's only a 22% chance of dealing three damage, meaning a 78% chance of the Redemptor taking zero damage from all of the Helvrin shots. Okay, so Helvrins clearly do not work against, you know, small vehicles anymore. In theory, it could shoot into a Rhino and deal an okay amount of damage, but let's be honest, if you're using the Helvrins to kill Rhinos, then your priorities are kinder off. Or rather, if you're bringing Helvrins to kill Rhinos, your army have completely different problems than long-range shooting. But let's not, let's not fret, let's see how the Helvrin does against Terminators. So actually, Armager Helvrin with his two Armager Autocannons have an amazing 71.3% chance of killing one Terminator, and a 33% chance of killing two Terminators, assuming they don't have cover. So yeah. What happened that the Helvrins just became not worth taking in 10th on top of these changes? Well, first of all, Custodes Infantry is just so much better than they were before. In 9th edition, Custodian Guards had three attacks. Three attacks. This is in a world where the normal Space Marine had four attacks on the charge. Some Custodian Infantry, such as the Terminators as well as the Wardens, had four attacks. But in 10th edition, they get five attacks. They were still strong in melee in 9th edition, but I think if we do the number changes, even with toughness increases and all those things, I actually think Custodies are actually more powerful in melee than they have ever been before. And that can somewhat make up for our lack of long-range shooting. Because we have that higher number of attacks, we're not as dependent on something standing long range and softening up targets for our custodian infantry to finish. And we just make up for that with the sheer number of attacks we can get now. We also have access to rerolls. We have plus one to wound against monsters and vehicles. Custodian infantry have just seen enough of a glow up that the Armager Helvrin's new profile just doesn't really do anything for us. A single Helvrin comes in at 150 points, which is the same price as an average of three custodians. It's slightly more if you want wardens. But three custodian guards with 15 attacks and then reroll just once to wound will have a better output than a uh, Helvrin will. So I can fairly confidently say that there is absolutely currently no reason to bring an Armager Helvrin in a custodian's army. But what about its baby brother? Or well, brother I guess, it's not smaller. The, uh, the Warglaive. Perhaps this guy does better, right? Right? Well, honestly, on paper it looks a lot better. It has some good anti-tank shooting with the Thermal Spear, which is 2 shots, a strength 12, AP 4, and damage D6 with Melta 4. Now, the gun is not Assault, so it's not like you can just run him forward and then shoot something and deal a ton of damage. But, you know, 24-inch shooting, strength 12, AP 4, that's not half bad. It also has, you know, a decent anti-tank melee profile. The Strike profile is 4 attacks, a strength 10, AP 3, and damage 3, and you also get sustained hits on the charge. Its sweep profile will obviously do nothing against vehicles and nothing against big infantry, but I mean, you can deal some damage, do some smaller things with it. But not looking at just the numbers on the datasheet, but actually running the numbers, also known as math, will show us that unfortunately the Warglaive doesn't quite live up to the hype either. So against a Toughness 10 vehicle with a 2-up save, you're looking at an average of 3 damage from the shooting, and an average of 3 damage from the melee for a total of 6 damage. Now for shooting, the math actually doesn't change that much even if it's against a toughness 3 vehicle because again we just assume they have cover because god knows everything gets cover in 10th edition. In melee it does change things a little bit, there is a bit of a higher chance of doing 9 damage instead of 6 damage in melee, but it's not an average amount. You're still looking at 6 damage on average, but you're moving the chance of going to 9 damage from like 20 something percent to 30 something percent as far as I remember. If we look at, let's say, I don't know, four custodian infantry on average, they will in melee without any buffs, just to sustain hits, just like the Armager Warclave have, also deal six damage on average in melee. But again, this is without spending one CP for Slayer of Nightmares or using any rerolls. You could also have, you know, a shield captain in the squad giving them double karate if you have sustained hits and lethal hits. Or if you control the objective because you're using custodian guards, then you have full wound rerolls and the number is much higher. 
The reason why I used four custodian infantry instead of three, because um, the, Ar the armager warclave is also 150 points, so that would be equal to three custodian guards, but obviously you cannot bring three custodian guards. We're bringing four. My point being is that the output of the warclave, unfortunately, just does not live up to the hype. Couple that with the fact that killing four custodian guards is actually harder for a lot of armies than killing one armager warclave. Yes, it is toughness 10 and it has 12 wounds, but one last cannon into a custodian guard squad will at best kill one custodian guard. One last cannon into an armager warclave will at best not kill the warclave, but deal a lot of damage. You get like the full value of the damage. Also, because, you know, there's never just one last cannon. If you took something like a Land Raider, shooting uh, four shots into an Armager Warglaive, that would probably kill the Warglaive on average. Whereas against Custodes, it would probably, at most, kill two. So unfortunately, the Warglaive doesn't really pass the test either. However, between the Warglaive and the Helvrin, if you're just the type of person that want to bring Knight in your Custodes army, the Armager Warglaive looks better in every single way. You could maybe put them in reserves to come in from the board edge and make sure you have that melta range. Or you could just use them as like a scary piece that just walks forward and then your custodian guard follows off behind them. It's not great, but it's, it's okay. It's fine. There was one more thing I wanted to look into while I was looking at the Warclave and the Helverin. How about if we go big? Like, real big. Like, the biggest big. Well, outside of a Warhound Titan. What if we brought something crazy like Canis Rex? He was all the talk at the start of the edition and he was probably also a pretty good choice to bring before he got all his nerfs. That being said, before he got all his nerfs was also before Custodius got all their nerfs. So let's look at Canis Rex once again into a toughness 10 to up safe vehicle. His shooting will result in an average of 8 damage. Quite good, quite decent. And in melee with his big profile he's dealing an average of 27 damage into a toughness 10 target. So obviously he kills basically whatever he comes into contact with in melee and in shooting he does a decent amount of damage. But he's 460 points for one model. Now I know we're playing Custodes and I know we love spending a lot of points on a few amount of models. But 460 points for one model? Th th that's taking even Custodians out of like the race. That's just at least when we spend 400 points on something we get, a, you know, nine models. <laughs> Not just one. Once again, he suffers for some of the same issues that the Warglaive does, is that it's one giant target. He's just begging to be shot at with those last cannons. I have a friend I play against who's playing Space Marines, and he hates using his big guns into my Custodian Guards, because if I just do a little bit good on my dice roll and I roll four pluses, it feels like such a waste. This big-ass tank with this big-ass gun shoots into Custodian Guards, gets one wound through, and then I save it on a 4+, plus, and then, yup, nothing happened. You didn't even kill a single model. If you get one wound through on a big guy like Canis Rex, yes, you're not gonna kill him, but it feels infinitely more better to do 8 damage to, a, uh, to Canis Rex than it does potentially killing one Custodian Guard. And even then, the Custodian Guard might just roll a 4-up, you know? And yeah, Canis Rex has a 5-up, but still. And while its melee will absolutely bitch slap anyone he gets into contact with, he can only get into a target one target at a time, and he can also be screened, you know? Now, Freedom's Hand is quite decent as well and will probably kill a decent amount of Terminators, stuff like that. But even if you picked up a whole five-man squad of Terminators, haven't even made back half of the po uh, points cost for bringing this guy. There's also the case of what terrain you're playing on. How easily can he move around the map? How can he go? He cannot advance and charge, he cannot advance and shoot. And as I mentioned earlier, 460 points, that's a lot of points that buys you 9 custodians on average. That could be 2 guard squads of 4, which you can use for holding primary and doing secondaries. And yes, they might die and not do as much damage as Canis Rex, but they're much more flexible. And you don't feel nearly as bad if you don't go first and you lose a guard squad versus not going first and Canis Rex freaking dying. Because that is something that could happen. There's a lot of big vehicles with big guns that would just love to start shooting at Canis Rex. There's also the case that you can just buy two Caladius Graph Tanks for 430 points and then you get better shooting output than Canis Rex and you don't ever have to worry about bringing Canis Rex... Or sorry, you don't ever have to worry about bringing the Caladius Tanks into melee 
because they do great at range. That's their purpose. They do better than Canis Rex at range on average. That gives you even more flexibility because now you have two tanks to move around. You can use two tanks to screen, to hold objectives, to push up enemy flanks, to threaten a certain line of sight. I looked at all the other knights and I'm afraid I just came to the same conclusion. Whereas in, yeah, you can bring them, but you're spending like 400, 500 points on something we don't really get anything out of. Now, you could use the suggestion of, you know, uh, I cannot buy two Caladius craft tanks because they're Forge World and stupid expensive and I have a big knight. Should I bring him? My answer is probably still no. Even if you don't have two Caladius Graf tanks, I think you can get more use out of spending those 460 points on a big Alaris Terminator squad with a captain. That gives you like 20 wounds with a 2-up save, 4-up invulnerable save. And because they're infantry and can walk through walls, they're honestly probably as mobile as Canis Rex, probably even more when you take into consideration you can pick them up once per game and put them down 9 inches away. They can advance and shoot their speeders, they have grenade launchers for blast. They have full wound rerolls against monsters, vehicles, and characters. And yes, if you're shooting spears and grenade launchers at a toughness 8 or higher vehicle, which means basically every vehicle in the game, you will be wounding on 6s. But you have full wound rerolls and you have a lot of shots. You're actually going to do a decent amount of damage a lot of the time. And you're going to absolutely destroy any vehicle or character unit you charge into with a 460 point Alaris Custodian unit. So, at the end of the day, I don't personally see any competitive reason to bring knights. I think Canis Rex is interesting for a fun standpoint. There probably is some local meta out there where people just don't bring as many big guns. And in those games, you know, as custodies, you could bring Canis Rex, put him in the middle and be like, come get me, bitch. And while they try and do that, you know, you just go around with the custodian guards or your Alaris or wardens or whatever and dominate the primary game. But in a competitive setting where people are mostly focused on bringing the good stuff, I, I don't think Canis Rex or any of the other knights make the cut. That is my opinion. I've heard some people be like, oh yeah, Hellwrench do so well, I just don't see it. Because as we talked about, the numbers just, like, the, the numbers don't lie. The numbers are just really bad on average. I don't see how you're getting value out of them. But if you are, let me know in the comments below. Thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed the video, be sure to like and subscribe for more. Comment down below what you'd like my next video to be about. And until I see you again, I hope you have a wonderful time.